Hello and welcome to the Wheat Podcast. My name is Maggie and through this podcast, I hope that we can delve deeper into issues and have holistic conversations on situations and things that you'd normally ponder about and ask, what is that? Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Wheat Podcast where we have engaging conversations that make you wonder, what is that? Yeah, today I am joined by a very exciting guest, Ufenze. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, be here. I'm really excited to have you here just because uh, we had was it ice cream and I yeah. loved I loved your story yeah <laughs> I was like that, that, that's a good one you have to tell us more there right mm-hmm. there so we're talking about getting divorced young and reinventing yourself because mm-hmm. I feel like we have a whole new version of you mm-hmm. from what you told me but before we get into it introduce yourself what would you like people to know about you all right so yeah. hi everyone my name is Ofense. i'm from south africa living in kenya um i am a life coach um i am a mom of one and a half on the way <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. A wife, um, and just like a, a, a bubbly individual that really lo- just yes, loves you living. Yes, you are bubbly. <laughs> you are very bubbly. <laughs> we yeah. met online. Yes. Then we met at the women's event mm-hmm. at uh, Kempinski. Yes, at Kempinski. Yeah, that was the first time. I was yeah. like, this person is so bubbly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I loved your energy. And we share a birthday. Yes. <laughs> we share a due date. Imagine. <laughs> It's so interesting. It's so interesting. I love it. I love it. it. So Mm. I want to know a little bit more about Mm -hmm. yourself because I know you just didn't wake up and become a life coach. Life happened. No, life happened. There was a (laughs) lot of life. Life happened. And especially in the aspect of marriage, Mm -hmm. divorce, Mm -hmm. then reinventing yourself in that space. I found that your story, whatever bit you shared, was quite catchy enough for me to be like I think someone will learn from this yeah. I think someone will really gain from this conversation so I want to know about Ufenze mm-hmm. like before marriage who was Ooh. that girl and how old she, like take us back to before marriage who was that girl baby what girl. was her view <laughs> you she were was, baby girl. was a baby girl <laughs> I mean not a baby girl in that sense but I <laughs> yes, was a baby girl you were baby like I was so young yeah. but so serious about life as well uh-huh. so um, I am the child of pastor of a pastor Ooh. so obviously pastor's kid you know how that is you know um, yeah. uh, how things are expected of you and, and I took my 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 title very seriously Ooh. so I was very much um a god girl Jesus girl like you know love Jesus and all of that yeah um not that anything's changed but I was very into it you were very into on oh, fire deep. holy <laughs> ghost there I was blood washed <laughs> tongue yeah. talking devil kicking mm-hmm. um that was me um also very focused at school loved school mm-hmm. um I'm the first born of three so I have a younger brother and a younger sister. Um, and uh, and I just grew up knowing like that I wanted to b- have a big life, like make something of myself mm. um, and and just a very ambitious person. So I took school very seriously, was number one in my class and all of that. And like <laughs> that kid. Yeah, like um, me. I was <laughs> like, really? what? Yeah. <laughs> Focused. Books. Very, very focused. Yes. Very focused girl. Yeah. Books over boys. Yeah. Always. <laughs> <laughs> um, and only in university did I think about boys. Mm. Um, but it was it was just so interesting just to to notice the the plan that I had for myself, the plan that I had for my life, um, and and just how things unfolded after that. Because <laughs> it was unfolding in that direction until yeah. it stopped unfolding in that direction. Yeah. But she was also somebody who was also very bubbly, um, also very um inquisitive uh loved knowledge loved growth mm. loved personal development um a little bit of a hippie just a, a tiny bit um and yeah just a, somebody who, who who loved life nice that's who i was so when you were heading to get married yeah what did you envision marriage to look like what was that for you 
I think it was just based on what my mom and my dad's marriage looked like. Oh, okay. Uh, because okay. they were, I mean, they were married until my dad passed away. Um, and it it was just a, a beautiful union to people that love one yeah. another, yeah. people that are building a family. Oh, I took that also very seriously. I used to listen to Focus on the Family. Ish. By Ish. Dr. James Dobson. You revise even in that area before you get listen, into it. <laughs> Dr. James Dobson was my mentor for when I was 14. <laughs> Who is that? Listen, at 14? Listen, at 14, I'm sitting listening to Focus on the Family. How do you raise a family? Really? How do oh, you, you took it seriously? I'm Ooh, telling you. Yes. How do you how do you um show up as a wife in a marriage? You know, yeah. like I was very serious about taking this mandate onwards because my dad used to preach a lot about families and how family units are oh, the important. basis Co- of society. Threat. Yes. And so I wanted to contribute to that with my the way that I raise my children, the way that I show up for my husband and whatnot. Yeah. So that's what I imagined. I imagined we're going to be together. We're going to have children. We're going to grow grow as, as a couple. We're going to raise them yeah. in the way of the Naturally, Lord. Naturally. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I imagined a happily ever after, but like church version yeah. vibes. <laughs> <laughs> like that, but I must yeah. say you're unique. Fourteen. Listen, fourteen. I was way too serious for my life. Like I was. <laughs> like, like, I should have been playing. I think you gave up vibes like you were planning. Like you mm. finish school, you get married, yeah. you get a job, you get yeah. babies. Like yeah. perfect. The way people p- picture perfect. The way people just did one hundred percent. Ooh. 100%. So tell me about you getting into marriage. How old were you? I was twenty. I think I was 22 or 23. Oh, 23. You were a baby. I was little. <laughs> I had just finished university. So mm. I graduated from my honors in economics. And then I started working. But in my first year of work, to, at the end of that year, that's when I got married. Woo. First After year After dating for long or just... We dated for three years. Okay. Okay. So I met him in university. Um, we were together for three years and then we got married after yeah. that. So I kind of knew him, but we were friends before that because I met him in my first yeah. year, second year, somewhere yeah. there. So we were friends for a little bit before that and then we dated and then we decided How to get married. How was married, married, life? married was life for the first six months? Let me tell you something, girl. It was amazing. Ooh, nice. It was everything <laughs> that I dreamed of. It was... <gasps> Oh my God. Like, I'm a wife. A, I'm a wife. Like, it was a girl. I was out there changing my surname on everything. <laughs> you went all the way. I mean, girl, what are you talking about? And you've been I practicing like, since Mrs. you were 14 at that time. Mrs. Don't documents. Get it wrong. I have it even. All of yet. the documents, Thought every about. single one. I found every last card. <laughs> <laughs> even those store cards that just didn't need you to. Every last card, loyalty cards, even down to the loyalty cards, honey. <laughs> down to the uh, loyalty cards. Down to the cards. loyalty cards. I had to change. I was very dedicated. You were in it. Like, for good. Do you know the, the Proverbs 31 woman? Yeah. That was me. Uh, like, you had revised. Literally. Li- girl, for a long time, even. <laughs> For a long time. So it was blissful and it was great because I think um it was because I was in that, it, it's not really my personality. I won't I don't wanna lie. Mm. Like in the Proverbs 31 woman vibe, and he was the type of guy that he was, it gelled, like it worked so well. Um he was taking care of us, like I was taking care of him in in my own way, and we were just really really happy mm-hmm. I remember we did a lot of premarital counseling, then we did um in in intramarital counseling if that's the thing just for the health of the relationship (laughs) wow just for the health of the relationship and i remember the pastor saying um you're so happy like i don't understand what's going on (laughs) and i'm like no you know i do everything that you know biblically i was i'm a girl of the book so like i would follow things yeah like that but the problem is that it wasn't completely aligned with my personality Mm. so then i started burning out because I was doing too much. You <laughs> doing too much? I was doing too much. <laughs> like I was doing way too much. Ooh. And so that's where the burnout started. And then the resentment started building. And then it just started becoming yeah. not what I wanted anymore. This is how many years in? This is a one and a half years, two years in. That's when you started Bunny Out. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you did it for long. I pushed, girl. I pushed. <laughs> it must work. I pushed. It worked. Um, yeah, and I think I think actually to be honest, one of the things that created 
the biggest resentment, believe it or not, is that, okay, growing up, we weren't allowed to watch television. So I'm not a big television person. Mm -hmm. Um, We used to only watch it on weekends. And so in the second year of our marriage, we decided to buy a TV. And he obviously did not grow up the same way as me. And so it was him behind the TV and then me doing the rest of the work in the house. And it was no longer that beautiful little partnership that we had worked Mm -hmm. up together um, where we where we actually run the household together and it became a one-sided operation Mm. and that's when the burnout started Mm. setting in Um, and yeah so the tv was one of the biggest mistakes whoa for me were you working at this point in your mind you're still working yeah we're working oh we're working okay um yeah like and for me it was just uh the fact that i was working at home and even and no you know working working in the home at, and I I mean in the in the in the office yeah and my job Burn was out. demanding burnout mm. total yeah interesting yeah. interesting that it's just the tv it is i mean it's like it, it starts started that small snowballing <laughs> yeah. from there because i mean i would feel resentful like somebody sitting down and chilling the whole day not the whole day. I mean, when he comes Most back from work, day, right? Yeah. Um, and then I'm cooking and then I have to serve and then I have to wash the dishes when I'm done. It looks like you had expectations there. Like, that, you're not yeah. watching the way you never used to watch. Yeah. So you're expecting, oh, we can think. Yeah. And you're not yeah. into the TV anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I know people who the TV personalities can stretch mm. the marriage. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. I do. Like exactly what you say. Like uh-huh. I, I leave work. I come home. I just want to watch TV, mm. relax. And someone is like, uh-huh. Can you do something more constructive? Can, yeah. you, can you read a book? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those two personalities, I don't know why we marry each other. Why? <laughs> but they say opposites attract. Opposites That's literally really it. Attract. Polarity is such a yes. big thing in relationships. Yeah. So when yeah. did you discover that uh, this marriage is not working? Because I can imagine preparing for long. Yes. And and you, the way you've said you grew up, mm. this was a thing you've prepared for long. Yeah. You don't think this yeah. is going to end. Yeah. What was that breaking point for you? There were two. Mm. Um, one, he made a statement that I was like, I am not having kids with this man. Because <gasps> um, he said he's never going to change a diaper in his life. Ooh. I was like, Ooh. Ooh. excuse me. <laughs> Just that. That is enough, okay? But it clearly wasn't enough because I didn't make a decision at that point. I just was just like, this uh, birth control I'm on is, yeah. is not going anywhere. Like, it's not con- it's not moving. Yeah. I, I need him to change that statement. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not <laughs> signing up to be a married single mom. That's not my, that's not yeah. my, that's not the cross I want to die on. Yeah. Um, and then the second was, okay, so we had been living in, in a different city. We had been living in Cape Town. Then we moved to um, Gauteng. Mm. It's near Joburg, but I mean, Funabel Park is a small town, but it's near Joburg somehow. Mm. And as we were living there, we were like growing towards growing to get mm. a family. We bought a house. We bought a new car. Um, and in that, in all of those changes that were happening, I was noticing that I I wasn't feeling as... A, a, like the affection mm. I wasn't feeling as loved as wanted as desired it was almost like we, we were just you know Existing. doing the marriage thing yeah yeah like just living together mm. um and it and just that connection was missing and I could feel that it was getting further and further and then we had a um uh I was feeling also myself getting further away from myself Mm. so that girl that I described before marriage she was no longer there like I I don't even I was a shadow of myself yeah yeah like I was a shadow of myself and I don't know if my friends saw it maybe they did maybe they didn't are there changes in your social life that you had made maybe um not really not that I noticed because everybody was shocked Oh. So it seemed to me that it was only me that was realizing that I'm moving further away from myself. Okay, okay. Um, but everybody else just seemed. Oh, also no. This is this is why because I'm a a chameleon, like a a personality chameleon. So I'm a different person in front of different people. So they don't they're not really sure yeah. who I am. Yeah. I'm much more authentic now. 
Um, but at the time, I was very much a chameleon, like a harmony. Just as long as it keeps the peace, I'm going to be that. Keeping the peace. Ah, I, I saw I saw that. There's this audio that's been going around. Mm -hmm. Keeping the peace for who? Exactly. It's Is not it for you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So in the midst of that, um, I noticed myself slipping away from myself. And then I asked him as a, as a, as a, what do you call a submissive wife? Mm -hmm. If I could go and see a therapist. It, um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, girl, I was yeah, that deep. Yeah. I was that deep. <laughs> I asked him, can I go and see a therapist? Because I'm feeling off. Yeah. And then he was like, no, no, you can't see a therapist because I know everything that's wrong with you. And I can tell you right now, girl, Ooh. when I tell you that was the second one and I was just like, did you receive like what he said was wrong with you? Did or I mean, the fact that he just said, no, you can't see a therapist. It's the fact that he said no. I, I mean, the fact that I had to ask, but... Let's that's leave different. that one. Yeah, that's on you. <laughs> that's on me. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that he said no, no and he had the audacity to say, I know exactly what's wrong with you when I knew that it was because of some of the ways that he was behaving mm. that I was feeling gaslit. I was feeling unvalidated. I was feeling the yeah. distance. And, and he was just like, no, I'm fine. You're the one with the problem. Oof. Oof. <laughs> so that was the second time. That was the, the, the moment that I realized, okay, this is unraveling. So that's suffocating it's unraveling yeah. so I went to go see the therapist and after I had a couple of sessions I love with her, that you still went I, yeah I mean I was just like I don't care it's fine I, I need to fix myself at this point I'm yeah. the one who's struggling yeah. mentally um, and so I went to see the therapist and after a couple of sessions and talking to her I realized I am not going crazy yeah like everything that I'm feeling is valid is valid yeah um, and like after being validated then I realized that actually I don't see a future here but because i'm a christian girl there's no there's no living there's no living Ooh. so i had to work on working on it so this was in the beginning of the third year of our marriage or the, oh it was it was in the third year of a marriage just in the third year and um yeah man i just knew at that point that it's it's over but it can't be over because but it can be over you know, so then I was like, let's go for couples therapy. He didn't want to do that. Let's do this. He didn't want to do that. For people who were doing therapy before. Yeah. And at the beginning, why? Why the change? Yeah, like uh, there was so much that had changed about mm -hmm. him. About him. Um, Because of the ideologies that he had been, you know, exposing himself to and mm -hmm. stuff like that. There was a lot that changed. Um, And perhaps maybe even about me. Change is constant. Yeah, it's constant. Yeah. It's constant. And so he was no longer in that same space. And also the... The, the counselors that we were going to have were different than the first oh, counselors. Yeah. Maybe if it was the first counselors, he would have obliged because mm -hmm. he admired that guy, the, mm -hmm. the, the pastor mm -hmm. um, and his marriage. Yeah. So that's how I knew that it's over. It's not going to work. And then I asked him. Because you know how we do. We always want confirmation. confirmation. Validation. Do you love me? And he took the longest pause I've ever Ooh. experienced Ooh. in my Ooh, life. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, uh, uh. He took the longest <laughs> pause. I was like, okay, this is, uh, okay. It's giving Kenneth. It's, it's giving Kenneth. Girl. Love is blind. <laughs> it's giving it's Kenneth. Giving Kenneth. <laughs> I was some Britney <laughs> vibe. I was just like, what is going on here? For real. And he, he gave the longest pause and he was just like so unsure. I think eventually he said, yes, I don't even remember what the answer but was. But you got your answer. But I got pause, what I needed yeah. to get yeah. there. Yeah. And I remember the end of that conversation. He was like, dude, if you want to leave, leave, you know. Ooh, no. I get that was the coffin. that The nail on the coffin. And I remember that was like in April of that year. I remember that conversation. It was literally the last time I was like, okay, I'm breaking up with you in my heart. Because I can't be like, like, I can't be in a relationship like this. Ooh. Like it was the first time that separation, divorce or anything now had ever been it came. put on the table yes. by any one of us. Yeah. Because we were all always willing to work towards something. But he was just like, if you want to leave, leave. I hear when you, we, we, we should learn to listen to men. <laughs> they really don't Girl, mix their words. They don't. <laughs> They say what they mean and yes. they mean what they say. Yeah, it's up to you to receive it. In that moment, I could have just gotten everything that I needed. You took how long? Six months. Fair. 
It took six fair. months. It's it fair. Because you're adjusting mentally to mm. very many things of what could have yeah, been. Is yeah. there any hope? Six more six months, months of living yeah. mentally first. Because yeah. m- most women live mentally first. Yeah, that's it. Then the physical is so easy no, the after physical, that. Yeah. Who cares yeah, at that point? So was it amicable? The, the that separation? Point? Yes. Of course not. Oh. Of course not. I mean, for me, the reason why I left, and I probably wouldn't have left if I'm being completely honest, mm. but the only reason that I left is because I found out that he was actually having an affair Ooh. at the time. So when he said, if you want to leave, leave, he was four months deep within that situation. Um, and then when I found out, it was like, obviously, uh, a whole lot, like it was in the ninth month of their togetherness. Um, and... I was so relieved. I don't want to lie. No, I was relieved. Because I wanted... Now you have a reason to yeah, leave. Yeah. I wanted... I really oh wanted my. to leave. But I didn't know how to. Because I'm a Christian girl. Where like, do you, you don't start? just leave. Yeah. Because we're not vibing anymore. Like, yeah. that's not a reason. Yeah. But he cheated. I bo. Bye. Mama. Mama. Did you <laughs> now you have a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Take me back. <laughs> Seriously. So I was once very you discovered relieved. that was it. And now. that was it. That was it for me. Mm. I remember doing some silly things in that moment. I actually just rewind maybe a month or two before. I got a prophecy from another pastor. He was like, God is trying to tell you something in one ear, but you're not listening. So he's gonna shut it if you don't listen. <laughs> Yeah. To him. And it was actually around this whole issue because mm. he was because this the next question he asked me was like, Where's your husband? And I was like, he's not here. He just dropped me off at this conference. Um, and he was just like, I, I don't want to tell you anything that I'm seeing here. I was you just can like, see. Okay. Bruh. If you want to see, you'll see. I don't want to, I didn't want to see. But I saw eventually, which mm-hmm. was at the right time because mm-hmm. I was emotionally in the right space and also physically in the right space. Mm-hmm. Like it just so happened that um we had rented out the house that we were living in and we were now staying at my friend's house for a temporary pos- uh, amount of time yeah and so at that time it just made so much sense to be like look it's fine you go your way i go mine mm. um and that that was that was it that was it um wow. it was amicable in the sense that nobody was fighting anybody yeah um doesn't mean there were no feelings of betrayal hurt. <sighs> did i feel betrayed maybe Maybe you just processed it. The last yeah, I think I've processed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, process, I just, I think had I found out at the beginning, it would have been really, really hectic. Yeah. But I found out at the right time when yeah. I had already decided what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, I already had my deal breakers in place. I already had, like it was just You were just waiting setting for a that boundary. one thing. <laughs> one thing. That was it. That, that was, that was, was it. it. Okay. Um, yeah, that was it. Um, even though I, I was like, okay, it, it mustn't look like I was waiting for this moment. So let me... Mm. say okay let's go for counseling or let's did you <laughs> i did you did i did i was like let's go <laughs> for just counseling try just to try, try again i don't no. know but like <laughs> because like it was the the pressure from the church right like you you yeah. have to have looked like you, you have to you try you really tried yeah but mm. i did i did i said do that do this i, I think i gave him four conditions to meet mm. um he must tell his parents what happened he must did he no. He wasn't even willing? No, I told his parents. I, I had to call them up and be like, look, yeah. if you're wondering why I don't, <laughs> yeah. call, or like why why you don't hear my voice in the background, mm-hmm. it's because I'm not there anymore. Oh. And this is the reason why. Um, and then he told his side of the story and obviously mm. it, it made me look not so great, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, um, uh, yeah. It's very interesting. Now that you've shared the details, then you finally separate. Mm-hmm. Where? What next for you? Like, did you have that a was plan? Such a hard. Did you have time a plan? of my life? Or because it was just... I had no plan. I had no plan. I had. Remember, I was working. Mm. I had stopped. I quit my job the year before we, or the uh, ten months before we separated. Ooh. Quit my job. Was financially dependent on him in every single way, and then he goes and quits his job too in the middle of all of this because he wanted to pursue his career mm. um, and his passion and and, and, and and photography. And so I'm running my small business. He's running a small business. Girl, the finances are messy. It's not looking cute <laughs> at all. Yeah. So it's in the middle of this financial disaster that we're both 
mm-hmm. created um, that all of this is happening. So I don't have a car because we only had one car. Um, we don't have a home because now we rented it out to some other people. Uh, like no- nothing of nothing of mine is making sense. I don't have a job. Um, my business is not at the sta- stage where it can sustain me. But mm-hmm. thankfully, my parents got me a car. Oh, you went back um, home? I didn't go back home. No, they bought me a car while I was living in Johannesburg because they're on the coast. They okay. they live in um, Mpangeni. It's a mm-hmm. small coastal town. Um, they bought me a car, so I got I was able to move around and run my business in a way, and and I think they they supported me financially. Yeah, because girl, my my business couldn't do nothing for me. <laughs> And then one of my best friends housed me. Yeah. Um, so I stayed with her for like about six to eight months ah, okay. until I got myself onto my so, feet. So, you know, most women struggle to leave because they're waiting for the plan to be so clear. Oh, no. Like, you can still live with <laughs> amidst the mess and figure it out because there's never going to be like no. a perfect time. Which is what most women actually say. I'm yeah. just waiting. I'm just waiting Girl, you wait for, for my life. money, and then I'll. Yeah. Then you but stay I there. must say, I'm mm. thankful we didn't have children because I think that would have made that the wait longer. Uh, yeah. It would have made me think, oh, but the father of the children, oh, but this, but yeah. you know, it would have made a lot of. Uh, it would have delayed the process, but mm. it was just me, and I knew it's that if easier. anything gets really tough. I've got a home. Mm. My dad always said that. He was like, there is no one that has chased you away from this house. Mm. You always have a room in this house. I love that. Like, I love that. And how was he telling them? How was he? Telling your parents. Uh, It wasn't easy. How did they receive it? They they received it. They were shocked initially. Mm. um, And overwhelmed. And I think it was hard for them because mm. this is the pastor's daughter. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> so uh, Image. we had this big, beautiful yeah. wedding. Mm. Now she's coming back home. Are we? You know? So it was. I think it was very hard, hard on them, much harder on it than it was on me mm-hmm. because I had already done all the processing months before. Yes, yes. So, so now everybody's shocked. Yeah, everybody's shocked. My dad was so shocked. My mom was shocked. They didn't see it coming. You looked no. happy out there. Yeah, my mom says she kind of saw it coming yeah. because we did visit home yeah. after the April talk. So, <laughs> you know, like it was May, but we were just... yeah roommates yes you know just fulfilling the duty of you know being there um so my mom kind of saw it but my dad was completely blindsided i remember he came actually he he flew in the next weekend or two weekends later to talk to both of us and he refused my ex refused to join so it was just me and my dad that were together. Ooh, that's like the nail on the Yeah, nail on the like there are more nails. Look. <laughs> At this point, there are just more nails on that. Like, nope, I'm not coming to meet he's you. Not, he's nope. not, he's not, not interested. He wasn't about that life. Yeah. He wasn't about that life. Ooh, how yeah. has it been then mm-hmm. to now reinventing yourself, finding yourself again? Because you lost yourself, it as was, you say. It was, yeah. How was that process for you, the healing process? It was a lot. And I can't say it's over. Mm, I can't say it's over. It's interesting. It's still going on. <laughs> it's still going on. Yeah. Um. So the process was. It was difficult, but or let me say it was challenging, but I had a lot of support because I have a supportive family. Mm. I have a therapist. I have a life coach. Wow, that's nice. I've, I've got friends, um, a community, mm. church family. Like I have people that are there for me, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and even if there there was potential for like stigma and whatnot, because I had a good support system, it didn't like knock mm-hmm. me over mm-hmm. per se. So reinventing myself was a lot of um, working with what I like going back to who I was, who I originally was, really mm. finding my identity, spending a lot of time alone, healing, journaling, um, doing a lot of um, meditation. Cause I also started, not started, but I just continued my meditation mm. um, habits at the time, a lot of in- introspection and trying to figure out what was it that this relationship was there to teach me. Ah, yeah. cause that's, that's what I was coming to. Mm-hmm. What did it teach you? So much. Especially about yourself. So much. One, <laughs> don't ever get into a relationship for like to feel better. Don't Ooh. do that. 
Uh-huh. Like self, I had major self-esteem issues. So before I met him, was it before or just like just before I met him or in the middle of our meeting days, mm. um, I was 20 kgs overweight. And so I was feeling like very... Oh, I watch your weight transformation yes. and I'm like, ooh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I was feeling very fat and ugly yeah and like unwanted because every single crush i had was unrecreated mm. and so he was the only guy that was actually looking in my direction mm. and so i made the decision to go with him because i mean what was i going to do just sit around and wait mm-hmm. until what you know so i just went with, with that and and i made a decision from a low self esteem place mm. point of view i learned that it's important not to sacrifice yourself in a relationship Mm. because it's not sustainable you can't do that very true you just talked about it in our previous episode like you 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 can't act for too long no (laughs) no be yourself be you be yourself as much as you possibly can yeah i still find myself getting into patterns of pretending or Mm. trying too hard but you're aware but i'm aware yeah yeah i'm aware now and then i pull back and i'm just like actually that's not who i am wait Mm -hmm. wait wait, hold on hold Mm. on i don't want you to get used to something that is not sustainable Mm here um i i've also learned that like marriage is not the be all end all of life like for me it was so important Mm. to have the title of missus that in 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 um it being stripped away, I realized that I am a I am a person, a whole person before, mm. you know, the titles and all of that. Like I, I really got down to my own. Who am I? I'm still answering the question, but it, yeah, I it get really it. I get me. it. I'm just yeah. thinking technically. Yeah. You went through the process of changing names. Yes. How hard was it to go back to just you? <laughs> your face girl <laughs> i was so disappointed <laughs> four years later now i'm having to change everything back Ooh. um Hectic. going back to myself was it was hard but it wasn't too difficult uh-huh. um because i had space i had i i had given myself space i had allowed myself to just take time in fact i i wanted to give myself about a year or two to just unfold and be myself Mm. and whatnot so I gave myself that space um and and then did the technicalities of having to go file for the divorce and you know you had to initiate yeah no I initiated it yeah because I'm the one who wanted it he wanted a second wife he wanted to add her to the fold (laughs) (laughs) he wanted to add her to the fold and I was like no I don't want to be first wife I'm sorry it's not my it's not the mandate that I wanted to sign up for Mm. um so I I'm the one that had to file and it was and that's why I say it was amicable because he didn't fuss any at all Mm. he signed the papers it was it we all went through. Uh, at least that was smooth for yeah, you it was very at smooth. least at least it was yeah very smooth. so let's talk about this part of your life mm-hmm. where you're now a life coach yes you know a mom girl you found love again what did it take for you to trust again the mm. process because i believe it can be a lot yeah yeah i think it's two things one i did not make it mean anything about me the fact that he cheated love it i didn't it was it had nothing to do with nothing me. to do with absolutely you. nothing yes doesn't mean that i'm an ugly person doesn't mean that i'm disrespectful even mm. though he tried to say that like he was just like yeah it's because you're disrespectful you're not satisfying nope. my needs as nope. well i was like listen it has nothing to do with me it's your choice to have walked out on mm. the promises that we had made yeah because i could have easily also i'm not an ugly girl mm. i could have easily gone and helped myself on the outside yeah but i didn't yeah so i made one i didn't make it mean anything about me so Entering new relationships, I didn't have ish, the self-consciousness yeah. or the need for external validation because I was already validated That's nice. myself. That's and then the second thing was really learning that the part of me that attracted him was the part of me that didn't love myself Oof. properly. Oof. Right? That's deep. I That's know. Deep. That's deep. So I did a lot of self-love work yeah. with my coach. I did a lot of self-love work um, with my therapist. And really just deepening that self-love mm. has been what kind of changed the game for me. And this is the work that I do as a coach now. I really help people to 
deepen their self love. Um, in fact, I have a, a, an attract your dream man course that was that that I was running recently, yeah. um, and the module that I just um, delivered on Sunday was about self love and how important and how integral and how magnetic yeah. self love makes you yeah. to the things that you desire and the things that you want. So that's the work that I did depersonalized or detached from the initial relationship and the way that things unfolded, I didn't make it my fault. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, loving myself is what really helped me to step into the new reality that I wanted to create for yeah. myself. Yeah. But you know, you ooze that. Oh, really? You ooze it. Oh, and, and then I see it through your, your daughter. Stop it. She's so bold. <laughs> oh, she is. <laughs> I still laugh at the ice cream thing. Like, I'm done here <laughs> in church. In the middle of church. Mommy, I'm done here. Oh, Let's God. go. Like, Do you know? ooze that confidence. I And a lot of happiness. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. So you've done the work. It's Girl, visible. Um, it's thank visible. You. Thank Were you. Were you scared of getting married again? No. I'm not scared it. of marriage at all, girl. <laughs> I can do it again and again. <laughs> oh, that's how you know you got it right. And the, listen, I'm not scared of marriage. Because it's not the marriage that caused the drama. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's a person. It's, it's, um, no, in fact, every marriage, even if, you know, J-Lo's string of marriages, <laughs> Kimora Lee Simmons' string. Yes. Of, every single relationship has got a purpose yeah and once you know the purpose then you step out of the pain like oh, nice. it, then it's no longer painful like you know cuz the reason the, the way i was able to step out of the pain from my first marriage was understanding what the purpose was okay it was for me to grow to evolve to expand yeah. to learn these things yeah um there's a purpose for this relationship that i'm in in my current marriage mm. and in the event i don't know because life is life. Mm -hmm. If something happens and the purpose is complete. Hi, mama. <laughs> I love your attitude. Right? Like this is a different offense that we are seeing from the one that we were talking about. Mm. Pre. Very different. Yeah. Two different girls. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I think it's it comes from just, I don't know. Mm. Confidence that I got me. I, yeah. I, I, I'm enough. Yeah, I'm enough. Yes. It's that I'm enoughness, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. I remember I wrote that on my mirror in 2017. Yeah. And I would read it every day. Like I wrote it in lipstick and I'd be like, I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. I really struggled with enoughness issues. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, it's so liberating to feel it um, as opposed to just saying it as an affirmation. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You really it. really it. is. Thank you. I see it. I, I thank love you. it. <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. Like whatever you're now getting in the marriage is just yeah. bonus, bonus because you're enough. Yeah. Yeah. There's a young girl going through divorce right yeah. now. Yeah. Maybe they got married really young. Mm -hmm. It's not working out or they're thinking of, you know, that period where you've said you were out, but not out because mm -hmm. you can't be out <laughs> in your head. What would you tell that young girl today? Man. I, I, I meet a lot of these young girls. Yeah. And I, and I think, I mean, I asked them a question, one question of, but what about you? What about your happiness, mm -hmm. right? What about what matters to you? What do you want out of this life? Because a lot of the times the reason why people don't want to move on mm -hmm. from relationships, even when the purpose has been fulfilled, is fear. Fear yeah. of, of the unknown. Of the unknown. Yes. Fear of being shamed by mm -hmm. the community. Fear of... Um, maybe even the things that they've gone through. Because, you know, when people break up and then their stories come out and they're like, ah, this man never took you out on a date ever. <laughs> or like, this man cheated on you 17 times. What do you mean? You know, like when all of those stories come out, then people feel super ashamed. The truth, when the truth comes out. Yeah, when out. the truth comes yeah. out. Because they, there's so much secrecy because we're trying to protect this thing because we're afraid mm -hmm. of being alone. Yeah. Um. So what would I say to her? I would really say, you need to figure out what you want mm -hmm. and you need to prioritize yourself and love yourself so deeply that something that is not aligning with your deepest desires, you're able to discern and you're able to move knowing and being confident mm -hmm. that you can get what you want. Like my mantra in life is what I want exists and what I want wants me. Mm -hmm. So I would literally try and guide her um, to to begin to think in that direction. I love that. It's hard. I, it's hard. It's hard. But it's a journey. Mm. Nothing 
good comes easy. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to work towards it is towards yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. And get I, support because I feel like we trick one another mm-hmm. as girls. Like if you have girlfriends that have that that are also sitting in the fear, that are like, oh, friend, you're 30 something. There's no ways. You can't just leave this man. What are you gonna do? Mm. Or friend, you've got a baby. What are you gonna do? Or, you know, all the different fear mongering that happens. If you don't have a supportive community that believes in you and that believes that what you want exists and it's gonna you be deserve very it, hard. it's gonna be hard to yeah. do the shift. You have to get that community, the right community. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It may look like therapy. Mm-hmm. Life coach. That's right. Yeah. That's right. If we listen to everyone, we will never move. <laughs> you will never. You'll never move. You will never. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So yeah. even as we wrap up, I'm sure there's mm-hmm. someone who's really, really learned. Mm-hmm. Because your journey, even how you speak, we can tell mm. the growth. Oh. You put in the work. Thanks, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell tell people where can they reach you? Because I know you're a life coach. Yes. Yeah. Where can they reach you? So, How can they reach you? Yeah, I'm reachable on Instagram. Instagram is the platform that I'm most active on. Instagram, mm. TikTok, at Ofense Tipa. I'm mm. sure you guys are going to write it down somewhere. Yeah. Um, and you can even email me at Ofense at gmail.com if you are interested in actually booking um, a session. Um, I'm going on maternity leave, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah. But when I come back, <laughs> yeah. then you guys can book. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll open up my calendar. So if it's closed, you must know that it's because I'm away. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you. Um, If you enjoyed this episode, resonated with this episode, or know someone who needs to listen to this episode, please share share it with them. Mm -hmm. Subscribe, leave your comments. Let's know what you think. If this is an experience that you've also been Mm -hmm. able to overcome, share with us. We are curious to hear your feedback. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for making it this far. Thank you. Congratulations. Yay, congratulations See you in a few weeks with baby. (laughs) Yeah. Until next time. Mm Bye-bye.